Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you about contention. And there's two different scriptures I kind of want to go over to, with you today. And I want to start off with one of my absolute favorites. This is from the Book of Mormon, from 3 Nephi. And this is 3 Nephi 5, 30 and 31 in the RAV, which is the RLDS, or Community of Christ, version of the Book of Mormon. And it'll be 11, 29, and 30 in the OPV, which would be the Salt Lake City Church's version of the Book of Mormon. And this is Jesus speaking. And he says, For verily, verily, I say unto you, He that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. There really isn't a whole lot for me to say about this. It's pretty simple. We need to stop fighting. It's one of the things the fellowship is really founded on, this idea of ecumenicalism, this idea that we as Latter-day Saints can get along with one another and from there get along with our fellow Christians and from there get along with our fellow Jews, our fellows and Muslims, all of the Abrahamic faiths, and from there all the world religions just get rid of contention. Mormonism is a universal message of hope. It's that 14th article of faith for the fellowship, I think it's the 13th article of faith for um, the Salt Lake City Church, that we believe all things, we hope all things. And I've talked about that in, in an, another video. So what are we going to talk about today? I want to talk about why or how is contention not of the Lord, but of the devil. And to do that, I want to share with you a scripture from the book of Enoch. Now, the way that we in the fellowship, our version of the book of Enoch is a little bit different. So this would be chapter 2, verse 47 in our version of the book of Enoch. But traditionally, this would be chapter 10, verse 9. We redid the chapters and verses it says, And Gabriel to the Lord said, Proceed against the debased and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, and the children of the iron from amongst men, and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days they shall not have. That sounds like the opposite of what Jesus says in 3 Nephi. And yet this is Gabriel. And in the Latter-day Saint movement, we believe that that is Noah. And here he is saying, have these people just kill each other off? Well, I want to go back to what the Lord says in 3 Nephi. The spirit of contention is of the devil. Why? Because the spirit of contention does exactly what Gabriel's saying here. It causes people to destroy themselves. Instead of coming together and unifying in Jesus Christ, what's Deuteronomy 6, 4, that Israel, our God, here Israel, our God, is one, is unity, is united. Therefore, we need to be a united people. But if we're the people of Satan, then the spirit of contention is going to be with us. And that has me asking a very genuine question. As Latter-day Saints, does that mean that we are of the devil? Because we promote contention as a movement. And I'm sorry if that offends people, but let's look at this. I'm going to use the Salt Lake City Church not to pick on them, but because it's where I came from and so it's what I know. What did we do? What did I do? I went and knocked on people's doors. I was not a full-time missionary, but I went out with splits, knocked on people's doors and let them know, hey, we're the one true church. Everyone else is wrong. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell, but if you want to go the right way and you actually want to be for God, with for real with God, you got to get with us. You got to get with the real program. That's very contentious. That's not the Christian message. Now, is it a message that some Christians have? Yes. Now, I want to be clear here, and I'm going to say that I do believe that the grace of Jesus Christ overcomes and it doesn't excuse these sins, but it allows us to still be disciples of Christ, even though we're making them. So I, I don't think that 
Mormonism or Christianity are, are inherently evil. I think that we as people make mistakes, and this is a big one that we make. We refuse to unify. We want to fight. And that's one of the reasons why the Latter-day Saint movement isn't growing. I, I had someone try to argue with me, like, oh, there's, there's 15, 16 million people in, in the Salt Lake City Church alone. Who cares about the rest? We're the biggest and the best. And so therefore, you know, we're obviously going places. That's not even a drop in the bucket. I mean, if you were to take 1 billion people, and that's one seventh of the population of the planet Earth, even if they have 15 million people, that's, that's nothing compared to 1 billion people. We, as a movement, not as one particular church or another church, as a movement should be bigger. Let's look at the RLDS church, now known as Community of Christ. I'm going to tell you what I know about them. I know that for a long time they preached that they were the one true church. And I've had people from that church tell me point blank that their, the biggest thing that they did wrong was they would look and see what the Salt Lake City Church was doing and they would do something else. They would do the opposite because they weren't that church. Well, who cares if you're doing the same thing or the opposite? We need to do what the Lord wants you to do. And if that happens to be the same thing or it happens to be the opposite, then that's fine. I believe that Kenya Christ has repented of that sin of the one true churchness. I think they're still trying to figure out who they are. And it's one of the reasons why they're not growing. But I think that they have a, if, if they would embrace the Book of Mormon, if they would embrace their sacred story and their roots, and if they can get over the fact that they were, they've come to, if they come to terms with the fact that they now understand that Joseph Smith actually was a polygamist, I know that caused a lot of problems in their church when they finally were like, oh no, we see the historical evidence. What do we do now? That that caused a lot of problems. But I think if they can get past these things and 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 move more towards their roots, revelation prophetic counsel, being a prophetic people, these are all still things they enjoy. Get back to the Book of Mormon. I, I think that they have a huge ability to grow. I think they could really go places. I think they are on, on the right track. They just have to... I'm sorry if you're a member of Community of Christ. I don't mean this in a mean way. They just need to get over themselves. Um, and looking at other churches... The Strangites. I, I want to love the Strangites. I believe James Strang was a prophet. I haven't met a lot of Strangites. The ones I have met seem very, we're right and everybody else is wrong. And I know that their their movement overall is growing. I've talked to people who have told me you know, about the baptisms they're doing in Africa and other places. And that's awesome. But we can't go anywhere as Latter-day Saints, if we are going to be a people of contention. Why? Because, back to these two scriptures, because the children of fornication will be sent against each other that they may destroy each other. It's what happened at the end of the Book of Mormon. It's what happened at the end of Ether. We, we know it's what happens. And again, going back to what the Savior said, we can't be disciples of Christ and have the spirit of contention in us. We can't go out on mission trips thinking, I'm going to argue someone to a point to where they finally concede that I'm right and then they're going to get baptized. It doesn't happen. It, it just doesn't. We win people over to Christianity by loving them, by accepting them, by welcoming them. And that, that's my message. We as Latter-day Saints, we as Mormons, we as Christians, we as the seed of Abraham, if we want to be Israel, if we truly want to grow any portion of our movement, the only way to do it is in love. And the reason why it hasn't grown like it really could and should is because we've been striving in contention for far too long. I'm not trying to say this to condemn anyone or any particular church. Or, or even all the churches. Every person in every church in our movement and in Christianity in general and just in globally, we all have our issues. We just do. There, there is no perfect church. There's no one true church except for the Church of Jesus Christ that's personal 
in each of us that have been born again in Jesus. I think that once we recognize this fact, once we recognize this truth, and we begin to move forward in Christ as a new people, I think we can be the hope that this world is looking for. One of the things that puzzles me about this world, and I'm speaking as a citizen of the United States of America, yeah, economically, we're not doing too good. The discrepancy between the have and the have-nots is pretty big. It's not like it was when I was younger. But when you look at crime rates, they're down. When you look at hunger, there are a lot of hungry children. That still needs to be solved, but it's not as bad as it has been. Because of things, programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, the elderly aren't just dying in the streets anymore because no one can afford to take care of them. Things could be better, but they're not as bad as Satan would want us to believe that they are. So I don't want you to think I'm trying to say all is well in Zion because it's not. What I'm trying to say is Satan tries to make us feel like everything is hopeless and the only way to win is to fight. You've got to fight for what's right. The Lord says, he that has the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. And he goes on to say, Behold, pay attention. This is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. So my message for you, my question for you is this. How can we live in the love of Jesus Christ? How can we bring hope to this world? How can we help stop the fighting and the contentions? How can we build middle ground and build bridges? Can we be a people of peace? That's my question. That's my Sabbath message. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.